So with the future of DC movies, as many of you know, for the most part, we're going to have this shared, connected, cohesive, mainstream universe known as the DCU. But we will still have other movies that belong in the Elseworlds or under the Elseworlds label. But what we heard from Peter Safran and James Gunn is that there's going to be a high bar to kind of justify any future DC Elseworlds movie to get made. And one of the topics of conversation we've had outside of that of the Batman and Joker, since they're continuing their sequels, is that of Keanu Reeves' Constantine. Because Constantine got somewhat greenlit to be in development with the writer Akiva Goldsman, with Keanu Reeves returning, before James Gunn and Peter Safran came into their new leadership positions. So, what we have now on the playing table is these two big cheese guys looking at what happened before, likely under Michael DeLuca and Pamela Abdi. Similar decision-making went into that of Henry Cavill returning for Black Adam. And they're like, actually, we don't know if we want want to do this. So we're going to get into that in the first story today and we've got some other stories for the DCU such as other chapter one announcements that are to be made and just how many actually got announced out of the scope of them that have yet to be announced and we've also got a couple of other tidbit updates. Shazam! Fury of the Gods reactions. Those who went to very very early screenings such as the premiere they're starting to come out with that and I just thought it would be fun to review the first somewhat reactions and reviews. So if you go on to like this video guys i'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button if you watch the mandalorian go check out my review recap and breakdown that i posted yesterday would love to see some more of you engaged there but anyway let's start with number one and that is keanu reeves's constantine now we spoke about this the other day in a video where we were starting to get some more comments coming out but it seems that keanu reeves has said even more since then i'm guessing it's because obviously he's got the new john wick coming up and i said something in that video of where i I wasn't sure if Constantine 2 was going to get made. And I'm going to somewhat repeat it again today. I could be wrong. I do want to stress that. But Keanu Reeves has said this in an interview with Collider. When asked for an update on the project, Keanu Reeves said, DC World is re-evaluating whether or not they want to do a Constantine with me in the movie. So fingers crossed. So here's the thing, even though I'm sure there's many of us who would like to see Keanu Reeves come back to a Constantine movie, and this most certainly does seem to pipe up to be that of an Elseworlds movie, because in of itself, Keanu Reeves' Constantine was very fun, very entertaining, but it did take quite a different adaptation of that of John Constantine in the comics. And again, I want to stress, it'd be fun to see another installment, but no matter what, I don't see James Gunn, who is very heavily delved into the comics himself, introducing introducing their mainstream DCU Constantine as of what I would view as even the first Constantine as an Elseworlds take. So when you analyze that for a second, you think, okay, so what is left on the table for it to be slotted into is the Elseworlds movie universe, if you will, and which is set outside of the mainstream DCU that they're fully concentrating on. Now, we know that there is a very high bar to be in that, you know, or to be justified to have a movie in that space. Obviously, Joker made a billion. They're more than happy to keep that sequel going. The Batman was pretty successful and Matt Reeves has got a full green light for his Batman crime saga as it's being described. But Constantine, again, in a similar fashion to what James Gunn walked into with, oh, you're already trying to bring back Henry Cavill and Black Adam and, and my vision may be a little bit different. Oh, Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi, who was filling mine and Pierre Safran's slots as the DC leadership while we were getting found out. Uh, you also greenlit a sequel to Keanu Reeves' Constantine film, and I don't know if I want to continue that. So now we're having Keanu Reeves say these updates, which are very much so expected to me. Now, I tweeted this out yesterday, and I think this is going to be somewhat my final word on it until we get that article saying Constantine 2 is no longer moving forward. So I tweeted out, and do follow me on Twitter, a little bit of a plug here. I think they're just seeing if the writing process for the sequel meets the, quotes, high bar needed to justify an Elseworlds movie being made outside of the mainstream DCU. And I said X to doubt, though, because as much as I would be down for this, I'd rather see a DCU Constantine. Now, this is where I stressed, I know you can have both. For example, the Batman trilogy with Matt Reeves and the DCU Batman with the Brave and the Bold Batman that we're going to be getting eventually. 
But I don't see that being a thing with Constantine. Also, high bar, <laughs> meaning specifically, is it really a quality story that's worth telling outside the continuity of the main focus mainstream DCU. That is what they ask themselves. And even though Keanu Reeves is a big name, you know this movie will make money in the box office. Is it really going to be like seven, eight hundred plus million to a billion? And I don't know if it will be. And as a result of that, James Gunn and Pierre Safran, who are literally building this brand new universe, we're getting movies like Swamp Thing, which as I went over in my video the other day, check it out, seven things I want to see in James Gunn's DCU, or we need to see. I was saying with the Swamp Thing universe and that movie opening the doors to all kinds of other areas in that world of DC, that movie could open the doors more or less to the Justice League dark characters like John Constantine. So when you see that and this movie universe this mainstream one you're working on with superman legacy this 10-year plan chapter one having been announced and we're about to get into how much more there is to be announced there's a chapter two do you want to green light an elseworlds constantine movie does it feel like a burning success like a little money bag sat there on the floor waiting to be opened i just don't know if it is and you know would it be worth taking that risk especially if eventually you're going to bring in John Constantine into your universe anyway. When you take all of that into consideration, lay the cards flat on the table, it doesn't surprise me that Keanu Reeves is saying DC World is reevaluating whether or not they want to do a Constantine with me in the movie. He heard about that being a thing under somewhat, not really the old regime, but when DC leadership wasn't firmly and fixed in place with their own vision. So Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi were like, oh, okay, Dwayne Johnson, you can have uh, Henry Cavill Superman going in there. Oh, you know, Constantine too. We may as well get that very early in development. But then they kind of had that taken away from them because James Gunn and Peter Safran came and they looked at what was already on the table and they're like, eh, you know, Keanu Reeves Constantine is cool, but it's, it's not exactly what we have planned for our future. And thus, the new leadership come in and they are reevaluating if they want Keanu in that role. And I wouldn't, you know, as much, again, in an Elseworlds myself, would love to see that movie. I wouldn't remotely blame James Gunn and Peter Safran if that wasn't really their vision, especially if they have Justice League dark plans in the near or far future of their DCU. And an Elseworlds movie like that, it, it might just do okay. I don't know if that's worth the gamble for them. But let me know your thoughts on all of this. Would you rather see a Constantine Keanu Reeves movie as an Elseworlds movie and then to take that shot knowing that there's meant to be kind of a high bar if there's going to be a story told outside the mainstream DCU. It's, it's really got to be worth it. Otherwise, we may as well have it in the DCU. Or would you rather just have a DCU Constantine, a new casting? Up next, I wanted to briefly, quite briefly, talk about what's already been announced with this latest tease from James Gunn a couple of days ago. So a fan asked about how much of Chapter 1 Slate did you tell us about? And James Gunn said less than half, which is pretty damn insane. I mean, I knew we had the rest of Chapter 1 to be announced. And then we've got a whole Chapter 2. Just in case you didn't know already, this 10 year, 8 to 10 year plan is just two chapters. So we've already had a bunch of projects announced for the DCU Chapter 1. And I've got Heroes Reforged Slate again. I love this slate on screen. Big shout out to them because uh, it's just it's such a cool picture. <laughs> but... What we have to bear in mind here is that the main projects that we have announced, so ignore the Flash universe reset as you see there, and then we have Blue Beetle, Aquaman, those were part of the old regime, they're still being fit into the DCU technically, maybe as a bit of a prelude because they are set after the universe reset, but the main projects, ignoring DC Elseworlds at the bottom, is Creature Commando, so that's one project, Waller, two, Superman Legacy, Lanterns, The Authority, Paradise Lost, Brave and the Bold, Booster Gold, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Swamp Thing. Really register this for a second, that is already 10 projects that have been announced and that is less than half so for the remainder of chapter one that is still yet to be announced we could hear about it in the next six months give or take who knows we could have well well over 10 projects this could be if that was less than half and that was 10 we could have i don't know 12 projects 14 more to complete chapter one and don't forget again the eight to ten year plan is two chapters so with that being said the fact that we've got 10 plus more projects to come before we even get onto chapter two, that really gives me a lot of confidence to see maybe 
things that I was really hoping to see. I thought chapter one maybe had four to six more projects before we got onto chapter two, just given the 10 year timeline and maybe the release of these things. You know, we've got Superman Legacy coming out in 2025. Does When does the Authority fit in then? When does the Supergirl movie release? When does Swamp Thing release? But either way, we've still got 10 plus, because that was less than half, the 10 projects we've already got uh, to be yet announced for the future. So I am really hoping, on top of what I said in my seven things I need to see in James Gunn's DCU, that this could mean good things for Green Arrow. Like, that's an abundance of projects. Are we going to get our first big screen Green Arrow? Are we going to get our first big screen Titans team up? Since in The Brave and the Bold, Nightwing is very likely a thing, given that Damian Wayne is coming into Batman's, you know, point in his career it just gives you a, an easy guess of okay yeah like dick grayson is very likely nightwing and on top of all the other teases that i've covered it seems like titans could be coming so what i'm saying here is i just wanted to remind you that was less than half we've got at least another 10 plus projects coming at least 11 12 plus um, so let me know what you really hope to see out of those announcements and that's just chapter one so does chapter two comprise of another 20 plus projects I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but that's insane to imagine. Now, I do want to say some of these might be, you know, series on HBO, such as, you know, Lanterns that is still yet to come out, Waller. So don't think that this is like a 20 plus movies in a 10 year period. It will be kind of complemented around the place. But ultimately, let me know in the comments, along with whatever comment you're going to post anyway. Given that we have 10 projects already, that was less than half. What do you think the 10 plus projects could be and what do you need? them to be for you okay and lastly for today's video i just thought it'd be fun to skim read some of the reactions coming out of shazam fury of the gods now this is basically shazam 2 it comes out i think march 17th i will be seeing it a few days earlier in london thanks to warner brothers for inviting me so it's going to be interesting to see these initial responses if if i feel the same way and i'll be letting you know in my in my review i think the embargo list for that the next day around the 15th at some point uh, obviously it'll be no spoilers because you know the movie won't be out at that point for most people but i'll give you a good vibe overall but obviously something we need to take into account is these are people who may have seen it at the premiere uh, had a special early screening access there's also many news outlets going over the shazam 2 first reactions have landed so let's let's read a couple of them so anthony the movie podcast said shazam fury of the gods is exhilarating david f sandberg whips up a captivating and truly funny story that can be celebrated with the whole family he mentions a few standouts there such as rachel zegler uh, and ultimately says that fury of the gods is super powered fun uh, shazam from here uh, with eric eisenberg saying fury of the gods is a super fun and worthy sequel not a game-changing comic book movie okay uh, but it wins you over with its characters and energy has some real surprises and a knowing sensibility that suits it well plus some creative and exciting monster action now before i carry on with this I want to say that one thing I have observed is that the buzz for this movie is definitely not really there. When I covered it on my channel compared to other DCU or DCEU, whatever it is, right? If there's an actual trailer for a movie, it tends to do quite well. But Shazam was like, you know, people were saying, do I look like I give up, you know? And, you know, I found the first movie fun. I don't think it's the most perfect movie by any means. However, I actually did enjoy it. Now, if I want to get pretty critical and nitpicky, I definitely can. But I do feel like it had a, quite a bit of heart for it. Obviously, choosing your family, you know, thematically, the movie made you feel things there. I mean, maybe it didn't for you. And I expected the same thing with this second movie. So even before I go and see this movie, I've been saying the same thing with how I do think and hope that Shazam Fury of the Gods will be better than Black Adam. Now, I kind of, before I've even read any more here, agree, even though I haven't seen the film, uh, in my prediction here, what, what Eric says. It's not a game-changing comic book movie. To be honest, I don't think any of us expected that Shazam 2, Shazam Fury of the Gods would be like, oh my god, this, <laughs> this has changed the comic book landscape, right, of movies. I don't think anyone expected that. But one thing, going back to my prediction and my vibe and my feeling or my hopes, is that I did hope that it would be better than Black Adam. Now, Black Adam, I find it an entertaining movie. But thematically, or the things that move you and stuff like that, I don't think that movie ever strived to do that. It sacrificed a lot of other beats that go into story 
storytelling or making a story for a movie for that of an entertainment kind of absolute action fest of fast pacing right and that isn't always a bad thing just look at the fast and furious movies not always like a really deep story there it's more like oh wow this was like an entertaining two hours of me eating my snacks and damn i want to see some more explosions like that black adam went full send on that now shazam I knew that they would be going bigger, bolder, bigger set pieces, production and everything. And, you know, obviously, clearly with the daughters of Atlas coming in with their freaking flying dragons and stuff, it would be more of a spectacle. But one thing I was hoping for, going back to that, is that they wouldn't sacrifice what Billy Batson's story is, you know, finding his family, operating as the Shazam family, what they could go through in this movie for complete and utter 100 miles per hour, Black Adam type spectacle entertainment, fast pace, fast pace, fast pace, maybe a quick quip here and there, but then we're straight back into the action rather than actually delegating, uh, you know, various chapters in the story to maybe slowing it down a bit, not forgetting the fun, but getting into a bit of the heart of the story. But I do think Shazam will do that. And I think that is possibly, possibly, I say possibly because I might not have this opinion after seeing the movie, but put it out on top of Black Adam for me. Now, commercially and in the box office, I don't know if it will do as good as Black Adam because Black Adam had Dwayne The Rock Johnson in it. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It had the rumors of Henry Cavill, like leaks. It was pretty much damn sure that. And even then it didn't do as well as it should have done, but it still had a lot going for it for maybe why people would want to buy a ticket, right? But Shazam, I think it's had a bit of a deflated balloon effect before this movie's even released, but that doesn't necessarily speak to the quality of the film. So even though I'm predicting it might not even do as well as uh, Black Adam in the box office, I do suspect that this movie will have a bit more of a well-rounded, I'm not saying it'll be perfect in every area or anything like that. As Eric says here, not a game-changing comic book movie, but I do low-key expect it to be a little bit better than Black Adam. So I'd love to know your thoughts there. Let's read one or two more reactions before we end this video. So uh, Shabazz here from the movie podcast says, Shazam Fury of the Gods is the most fun I've had at the movies. Wow. It's the most fun they've ever had. Okay. Uh, I, and I'm not doubting that. It's just, really? Out of every movie ever released? By the way, filled with comedic charm, heart, there's a lot to love about this family. Lucy Liu, Helen Mirren, and Rachel Zegler are, force, are a force to be reckoned with and a joy to watch. And uh, Pony Smasher hits it out the park. Joseph uh, Dekelmeyer, uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods, is what I wanted the movie to be. The film does a good job of balancing this large cast, and it's just a fun superhero movie with a lot of heart. Uh, I'd love to see these characters and actors carry on in the DCU, and I think it can fit. Go see it for yourself. So again, that rings with my expectations. I try and not go in with any expectations, but then there's like the default ones. Like, okay, you know, Shazam, you know, you've already got pre-established characters there from the first movie, the Shazam family. So, you know, there is some, you know, I can't deny there's some kind of idea in my head that, oh, they might focus on the Shazam family in the second movie. And again, just hearing that apparently is a fun superhero movie. Obviously, this is Shazam with you know all of this spectacle going on I, I do expect it to be fun i don't know how well it will do for me but i do just like black adam expect it to be entertaining here apparently it has a lot of heart as well so again that is what i'm hoping will rise it above black adam for me because i really want it to black adam i said in my review it was fun and entertaining but i don't know if i would rewatch it again and again and again uh, or even necessarily even buy it on blu-ray because it was a fun flick but do you know what I mean? Maybe I'd watch it if it was on a streaming platform for in, included in my subscription, but all well-rounded, like, you know, okay, we've got this tick box of this development, that development, enough, you know, screen time hit. No, we went full send on action, but will Shazam make those same mistakes? Because clearly in the trailers, it is a spectacle, but I think inherently with the character compared to that of Black Adam, it does have a lot more potential for like, it'd be pretty hard to not show decent story in a movie which inherently is based on the character with a lot of heart and a lot of heart surrounding him with the Shazam family. There are plenty more reactions. Obviously, I'm pretty much sure everyone I'm reading right now, skim reading, is uh, a positive one. Courtney Howard here says, Shazam movie is a super powered sequel that packs a punch, a super solid, super fun, super smart blend of hilarity, heart and heroics, ramps up the action, irreverence, to a delightful degree, Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu, and Rachel Zegler are the MVPs. Love 
the dragon. So all in all, a fairly positive reaction initially, but I am taking into account these aren't official reviews just yet. If I was doing this when the Rotten Tomato scores, the actual proper critic reviews start coming out versus the audience score, I'm sure I'll be reading some much harsher reactions because these are, again, reactions coming out from the special insiders, if you will, who get invited there first, the special screenings. And they do usually, I would say, like across a long pattern, tend to be like a initial kind of warm response usually. They usually complement the strengths of the movie rather than acknowledging uh, potential flaws uh, straight up. But when you have the Rotten Tomato stuff come out, uh, I, I kind of wish they kind of were almost already out so I could then maybe take into account some other views. But one thing that is being said here, regardless of what or how hyped you are to see the movie or what you think of the movie before it's even come out, I do expect Shazam, just like the first movie, and if not twofold, because it is a sequel, again, bigger budgets, bigger production and stuff, to be a fun time. And I, and I hope a more fun time an all well-rounded product, granted that, again, I don't expect it to change the comic book landscape either of a movie compared to that of, you know, Black Adam with its superhero punch fest, which, again, sure, we want that in superhero movies, but it needs needs a little bit more juice in other areas that make up an all well-rounded storytelling experience. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you now. Let me know your thoughts and what you thought of everything we went over in today's little DC. Well, it wasn't really little. I still rambled for a bit, but you know how it is. Uh, really love you all. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much for the support on the channel. If there's one more favor I can ask of you, if you, especially if you've got this far, if you do watch The Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, do show some love to my Mando video. Uh, it's already doing better than the previous weeks. Trying to bolster a bit more of a Star Wars audience up there because basically no one watches my Star Wars content on the channel so any love and support that can be sent that way would really appreciate it would really appreciate you joining me each and every week for other content that I'm introducing to the channel uh, but until next time guys I'll be here with another DCU update whether it's big or small sooner or later thank you so much for watching hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you DCU fam in the next video goodbye